Good afternoon, friends and neighbors, and welcome to Drive Time, a virtual music quiz show presented by 91.3 WYEP. Now, please welcome the host of Drive Time, Joey Spihar. Good Spihar. afternoon, and welcome to Drive Time, WYEP's musical quiz show. I'm your host, Joey Spihar, and let's welcome today's contestants. We've got Stacy in Forest Hills and Pierce in the Southside Slopes. Good afternoon, guys, and thanks for being here. Thank you. Hey, thanks for having us, Joey. Well, I think it's going to be a pretty fun game, and we will start with a series of memorable album covers. All you have to do is take a look, try to figure out what that album is. Now, each question in this round is worth one point. Pierce, you won the coin toss before the show, so we'll start with you. Take right. a look at this. Oh, Jesus. Hmm. I know it, but I might have to pass. I'm blanking. Uh, yeah, I gotta pass. Stacy, what do you think? Tattoo you by the Stones, the Rolling Stones. That is 100% correct. Their 18th American release turns 40 this summer, uh, comprised mostly of studio outtakes from the 70s, but it does contain one of their most recognizable songs, Start Me Up. Question two goes to Stacy. Take a look at this one. Barbara Streisand. Oh, but I don't, I don't think I know the name of the album. Well, I'll give you a hint. It's not Barbara Streisand. Pierce, it's what do you think? Wow, oh, crap. Um, yeah, no, I got nothing. Well, it turns out that we don't have the same mom because mine used to play this one all the time. It's Between the Lines from Janice Ian. Yes, Ian, not Barbara Streisand. Ah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I can't that's her. That record, honestly. No, a thousand times. Well, that one was the number one in 1975, selling almost two million copies and winning a Grammy for the song at 17. Question three goes to Pierce. What do you think about this one? Ooh, that's tough. That is really tough. Is that uh Paranoid? Black Sabbath? That's a guess, I know. Really <laughs> no, no dice on that. Stacy, what do you think? Oh man. Something with like an X-ray on the cover. I'm just gonna throw out a guess. Nine Inch Nails. A little bit closer than Pierce. It's the Cure, the Head on the Door. Mm -hmm. Their first album to be fully composed by singer Robert Smith, and also their first with new drummer Boris Williams. All right, last question of the first round goes to Stacy. See what you think about this one. I don't know. It doesn't nothing's coming to me right off the top of my head. I think I'm gonna have to pass. All right, Pierce, can you even it up with this one? Uh, is that Led Zeppelin? No, uh, no, no. I got, no, I got nothing. <laughs> it's Wake of the Flood from The Grateful Dead. Their sixth oh, album with came out in the fall of 73. It was their first on their own record label and also the first without founding member Pigpen. Uh, I just pretty lost good one. Street cred right there. Well, <laughs> sorry, Pierce, it happens. All right, nobody so listens to Jam Band actual albums anyway, right? Right, 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 <laughs> so you got an excuse. Well, at the end of round one, Stacy, you are in the lead with a score of one to nothing, but Anything can happen here on Drive Time. So let's get to know our contestants a little bit more. Pierce, uh, you are, maybe not you, but your work has been very popular around town. Uh, back when concerts used to happen, you would draw up some pretty sweet posters. So since there aren't any shows, how have you been keeping busy artistically? 
Um, I've been doing a fair amount of album art type stuff, and I have done some posters too for you know virtual type events and that sort of thing. Um, and then also, not really in the artistic realm, but I've been helping some local artists and businesses manage their social media a little bit better. Me and the other guy from Gray Area do that. Um, so yeah, that's really about it. And you had a coloring book out? I did, yeah. I put out a coloring book right before Christmas. Um, still available in my store too, by the way. A little plug there. But yeah, I basically have all these vector files from all the posters I created and they make really perfect coloring pages. So I just compiled them and put it out. Well, fantastic. We'll keep an eye out for it. Well, I am ready to play some more Drive Time. And round two is a fun one where we test your knowledge of music trivia with a series of multiple choice questions. Each correct answer in this round is worth three points. And Stacy, you are up first. The Beach Boys broke the record for longest stretch between number one singles in 1988 with Kokomo, their first number one since Good Vibrations in 1966. That record has since been broken a few times. Who holds the record currently? Is it Cher, Elton John, The Beatles, or Michael Jackson? Hmm. Those are all possibilities, I think, when you think about their like original start to their careers and then, you know, having like a later, you know, I don't want to say comeback, but I guess we could call it that. Um I'm going to guess Cher. It was a good guess. Cher still holds the record. And it just turned 25 the other day. Uh, her song, Do You, what is it? Do You Believe in Life After Love? The auto tune classic. That's the one. All right. Question two goes to Pierce. MC Hammer had a huge hit with You Can't Touch This in 1990. And that song is based around a sample of another freakishly popular song, which songwriter gets a cut of MC Hammer's very touchable royalties? Is it Barry White, Bootsy Collins, Prince, or Rick James? That would be D. Rick James. It is Rick James. His song, Super Freak, is the basis for MC Hammer's You Can't Touch This, so Hammer uh, couldn't touch it. Not all of it, anyway. <laughs> Question three goes to Stacy. A good band can make or break a late night talk show. This group keeps the beat for Jimmy Fallon on The Tonight Show. Is it Paul Schaefer and the world's most dangerous band, Cleto and the Cletones, The Roots, or Max Weinberg and the Max Weinberg 7? The Roots. It is The Roots. They've been with Jimmy Fallon since 2009 now all right pierce last question goes to you lizzo is known for her big voice larger than life personality and her astounding ability to play this orchestral woodwind is it the oboe the flute the bassoon or the clarinet yeah i'm gonna have to go with a hundred percent guess on this one um let's go with b flute well, that was a great guess. It is the flute. She started playing at age 10, and in recent years, her flute named Sasha has become a bit of a celebrity itself. Nice job. Well, after two rounds of play, our leader is... There is no leader. We're tied with a score oh of 7-7. Seven to seven. Uh, Now, that can change a tough one. very drastically in the final <laughs> round where each question is worth a little bit more. So, Stacy, uh, I hear that you are an avid record collector. How's your collection looking these days? Good, good. Uh, lately, my favorite genre to collect uh, is Exotica. So, uh, especially since, you know, it's a little easier to find in, say, the dollar bin uh, at record stores. Uh, you know, you can get some obscure, goofy, you know, music with people making bird calls and things like that. So I'm really getting into that. As long as you bring cash, right? Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I went to one of uh, Jerry's sales, Jerry uh, Weber, 
formerly of Jerry's Records, uh, went to one of his sales at the Irish Center and uh, forgot that he uh, is cash only all the time. So my boyfriend so generously went and uh, ran to the cash machine for me. And that's, I knew it was true love, you know. Nice. Well, for future yeah. reference, I think with Jerry, it's cash or whiskey only. So good to have a backup. <laughs> Well, we have now arrived at the final round of drive time for today. And I got to say, this is for me always the hardest one. And that doesn't make sense because I picked the questions. So this we've taken four songs that you might know from, we've taken four songs that you might know from listening to WYEP and we've twisted them around a bit to test uh, how good your ears are. So each question in this round worth five points so listen closely pierce you are up first take a listen to this i don't remember the name of the song the oh god that's gonna drive me nuts i'm blanking go ahead take it <laughs> Stacy, what do you think? I know the artist. Oh, no, I know the song name too. Is it Mumford and Sons Little Lion Man? Ding ding ding. Marcus Mumford has defended his use of the F bomb in this wildly popular song, saying that he tried a bunch of different words, but nothing quite had that punch. So, you know, F it. That's what I say. Question two goes to Stacy. See if you know what this is. I know the song, but I'm, I'm gonna just guess. The mm, I'm gonna guess um, Pierce or Fears. Nope, you're wrong. Pierce, what do you think? Is that the Butthole Surfers? No, but I see where you're going with that. That was actually a reversed version of the intro to How Soon Is Now from The Smiths. One of the more identifiable guitar lines of the 1980s, Johnny Marr's Enduring Riff was sampled by Soho for the song Hippie Chick in 1990 and covered by Love Spit Love for the movie The Craft in 1995. All right, Pierce, take a listen to this. Depeche Mode? It is not Depeche Mode, yeah, but you yeah. may have heard it at a 80s dance night, I'm sure. Stacy, what do you think? Hmm. Can I hear it again? Nothing. It's Go West from the Pet Shop Boys. Originally a song by the Village People, the Pet Shop Boys decided to record it in 1993 after playing it live at an AIDS benefit the previous year. All right, last question of the game goes to Stacy. <laughs> I, it's another one of those where I've, I've heard it a thousand times. As soon as you say it, I will know it. Um, I feel like Pierce knows it from I do. Uh, the way that he's not uh, struggling right now. So um, 
just let him take it. What, uh, what, okay. Well, wait, what if I say like, uh, weed is <laughs> something? I don't know. <laughs> um, uh, weed is. Is that Oh, weed is. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not correct. But um, it was a valiant effort. Pierce, what do you think? That's Jane says from Jane's Addiction. Jane! Yes. Well, the real Jane from Jane's Addiction and from Jane Says is a woman named Jane Bainter who lived with frontman Perry Farrell back in the early 1980s. Uh, and some good news, she has since overcome her addiction. Pierce has 12 points and Stacy does as well. So what we'll do, move into the bonus round. Now there is one question it is multiple choice and the way we'll determine who gets to take a first stab at it i guess is with a coin toss since we're making these rules up as we go so pierce you won the first coin toss uh we're gonna let you call this in the air tails tails never fails there it is all right <laughs> hopefully to determine the winner of drive time what is Rosemary Welsh, WYEP's afternoon mix host's middle name? Is it Margaret? Is it Anne? Is it Grace? Or none of the above? Uh, well, I guess I'll go with B, Anne. Anne is incorrect. Stacy. Mm. A, Margaret. Incorrect. The answer is none of the above. In fact, Rosemary has no middle name. It is what? just Rosemary Welsh. Well, in this unique situation, I guess we'll have to extend the bonus round one more question. Let me see if I can think up something good here on the spots. Okay, so which of these artists have not played the WYEP Summer Music Festival twice? Is it Dr. Dog? Aaron McKeown, Martin Sexton, or the Sam Roberts Band? Stacy, you go first. I'm gonna say Martin Sexton. Martin Sexton, incorrect. Pierce, what do you think? I think B, Aaron McKeown. Boy, oh boy, this is just not your guy's day. It's Dr. Dog. Uh, everybody else has played the Summer Music Festival more than once. All right, now I have one more station-related question in mind, and then we're going to move on to guess what number I'm thinking of. So <laughs> here's, take a listen. You're going to answer this one first. How old will WYEP be in the year 2024? Oh, God, math. Um, 50? 50 is correct. Right off the top of his head. <laughs> Congratulations. It was a fight to the bitter end. It was. Hell of a you are the winner of Drive Time today, and you truly deserve it. Now, I want to say thanks to Stacy and, of course, to Pierce, our winner today, and to you for watching and playing along. Uh, we're going to send Pierce a nice prize from the WYEP cabinets or garage or basement or somewhere. We'll find something good and send it off to him. And next time, maybe it'll be you playing on Drive Time. Check out past episodes at WYEP.org. Uh, and join me next week at 1230 for another episode of Drive Time. I'm Joey Spihar. I'll see you then.